All right. <clears throat> this is the friction heater all together. It's running into my house. It's got a little bit of vibrational noise. Um, I can tone all that down just with critiquing that bearing right there. I need to get a really good high quality bearing and also down there see it just shut itself off. Um, and that was about three minutes of runtime. I was hoping to continue running while I was talking. Maybe I'll open the door to get it turned back on. That white device you see right there is the thermostatic control system. Um, it is pro fully programmable for seven days and on-offs and times and however you want to do it. it. It's got all the bells and whistles of every fancy uh, thermostat control. Right behind it you see a gray item. I'll try and get a little closer and off to the side. Okay, that gray item back there against the wall right behind this white, you see gray and then you see kind of a white again. Okay, that gray item is calculating the on-off cycles and the and the the amps and volts that it's running while it's on and that's going to determine how many watts it's using and then it'll calculate over a course of an hour a day a week its actual usage of its on off cycles so it's it's retrieving data data that's going to tell me exactly how much this guy's running now i've already done that but i'm going to continue to run it because the longer you run it the more efficient that reading is going to be because you're going to have more You'll have colder days or kids running in and out. There's going to be more days that's going to be running than less. So you got to really average everything out. So uh, what I've done here is built the core that I've showed you on the earlier videos, uh, mounted it uh, with a one-horse motor, um, induction motor, uh, simply just put a simple V-belt drive on it, and uh, haven't really put any, any exterior fans on it at this particular point. On that top shaft right there, I'm going to go ahead and manufacture... Uh, a fan out of aluminum that when this turns on it's going to be forcing air downward and I'm going to put another one that's forcing this up here I'm going to put a shroud around this so this hot air there's already a fan at the bottom is going to be coming up around forced back down through vent holes that's here and with the um, fins that come off of this for more surface area much like a heat sink and then it, this all be encased and then out the bottom will be open on uh, three quarters of the of the actual disc so it'll be dispersing hot air out the bottom, down the floor, and back up. Okay, um, so that's simple. This is uh, I just wired this in uh, with a 15 amp extension cord. Uh, it came to me wired 220. I, I rewired it for 110. Uh, it's got a capacitor start, capacitor run. Eventually, I'm going to add capacitance to it so I can even lower the amperage use, inline amperage even lower, um, and get the efficiency of this down. But you can see, now outside right of my house right now, it's uh, 40, 45 degrees or something like that. And tonight is probably going to be down in the in the 30s, high 30s. But, and this, it's not even cold yet here. It'll get down to 10 degrees, 9 degrees, 5 degrees, and for lengths of time. So the Delta T from outside, it's, uh, let's just call it 45 degrees, make it even. And in here it's 75 degrees. Okay, so that's a 40 degree delta T. So almost 12,000, 1,300, I'm sorry, not 12,000. That would be nice to have a 12,000 square foot home. <clears throat> but anyhow, I don't have that. Um, it's around 1,200 to 1,300 square feet, somewhere in there. My entire house, this is just passive heat. It's heating my entire house at 75 degrees right now. And you can still see it's on its off cycle. I'm hoping that I can uh, continue to monologue here and get this sucker to turn on so you can see exactly how it works um, yeah maybe we get lucky enough maybe we won't what else can I add to this video um, yeah if you guys got any comments or uh, you know any questions th this this right now I guess what I can add is what I've calculated already retrieved out of the data out of this uh, gray box back here it's the on off cycles we ran it for all, all yesterday and all today and and last night so good 24 hour period um, it cost us around five cents an hour to run and for the entire day it was about a dollar uh, for the week projected so far it's about two dollars and fifty cents somewhere in there so and you just keep extrapolating that you know and it gives you the month and, and then the annual cost so uh, monthly cost at this particular point with the data retrieved is around 30 bucks to heat 
let's just call it 1200 square feet, 75 degrees with the 40 degree delta T between outside and inside. So not too shabby. All passive heat at this point, not even forced air, nothing. So eventually I'll make it more efficient. You can see it's still off. I would hope that it would turn on. Let me just go ahead and walk to my door real quick. It'll be a little shaky. I'm on my cell phone. And this is just a sofa, um, you know, that we, uh, sofa bench or whatever they call it, that I have this under. I just quickly drew this in the house and, and put it in. I get some cold air coming in here. Maybe it'll turn on real quick. Because the, the, the temperature probe is down underneath there with it. So I've set it, and I also have a thermometer back up on the wall. So that temperature down there, whatever it is, will equate to 75 up here in the, in the living, living space. So that makes any sense to you. Doesn't look like it's going to turn on. Well, I'll give you a couple shots of it here. This extension cord here was, I was going to go ahead and put in a, a little forced air fan. I decided not to, so I just need to clean that mess up. I built the bracketry. Actually, this whole thing is built by me from the ground up. So, kind of fun. It was a fun build. Uh, like I said, I still have a lot more to do. Um, got my finger out of the camera there. i got to build the shroud around here, put my fans in. Um, slot some slots around the bolts and then encase this and then force the air up around and down basically I want to utilize whatever heat is coming off the motor um, starting with fresh air here you know from the back side dividing this right here so there's no cross contamination of hot air and cold air coming in to the motor so I'm using whatever heats coming off the motor okay cooling the motor at the same time pushing it up over across the belts in the shroud and then forcing it back down through here so I'm kind of preheating the air as it's coming around and also cooling the motor at the same, motor at the same time and then this will be its own heat sink as I'm done with it and <clears throat> really frankly they're, they're in the core there's only one moving part um, outside of the bearings if you add the bearings there's top bearing bottom bearing and then the core so that's three moving parts um, so failure wise, your, your main failure in this as far as longevity goes is just going to be your bearings. Um, there's no wear parts inside, there's no emissions, there's no smoke, there's no nothing, no chimney, no CO2s, no... Um, the, 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 the material I'm using inside is 100% organic material. Um, it doesn't create a waste. Um, it's good for the, almost the life of the entire heater. Um, the only thing that's really going to fail on you eventually is going to be the motor, but the induction motors ran properly run for years and years and years. Um, this one here actually has a built-in circuit so if it does trip you just trip it you don't have to worry about breaking breakers or nothing like that but you can see the gray box pretty good from back here. Eventually that gray box go away once I retrieve the data that I need but I'm gonna run it for at least a year with that box on there so I got good ample data over the entire course. Now something I will be doing um, and I'll get into another video when I actually make it is uh, I'm going to be putting in on the bottom side of this uh, next to this cooled air part um, some TECs but that'll be different different subject different video uh, entirely differently and then hopefully feeding back whatever the CBAC voltage is back into an inverter and then change it from DC to AC and then hopefully compensate some of the inline amperage and voltage if it's a little bit a little bit's better than nothing okay well, it's still not going to kick in, so that heater core right there is pretty hot. I'd say it's at least over 200 degrees right now. Um, something you got to keep in mind is you get anywhere near this thing, it will burn you. It'll burn you really, really bad. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind if you try to build something like this. All right, be safe, have fun, and I hope that uh, you guys are able to do something like this because it has taken off a $200 a month bill and that we used to use for heating or higher and turned it down to a $30 bill. Thank you. More money for my projects.